Okay, welcome to an abridged version of the uh, Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. There are no appeals tonight, but we are going to be discussing uh, the new changes that have gone into effect with the zoning and also how that impacts the board and any applicants that come forward. So you might enjoy listening to it. I'm wearing a hat. This has been up for hours and you don't want to see my hair. Um, you guys just don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just go with a quick roll? Um, I can do it anymore. Do it good. Uh, Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Richard? Here. Mr. Loisel? Here. Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. And uh, Mr. Blizz? Uh, Here. <laughs> And you got it right at Blaze, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, sorry, I had a brain brief there. No, sometimes you want to put that one. It's not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is. Uh, they've actually mentioned We have mics right there, oh, so okay. it should be picked up. We okay. don't hear it yeah. amplified. Yeah. But, uh, and did you say Mr. Crockett? Not here? Uh, Mr. Crockett. Not here. Not here. Okay. All right. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, before you do that, Mr. Chair. Point of order, can we uh, approve the minutes from the last meeting? Do we have the minutes? We do. Yeah. I didn't send that package because I've been gone for 24 hours. Would you like to see it? Okay, do I have a motion on the uh, minutes? Yes, make a motion to approve the minutes as printed. Second. Discussion? And then I'll take Unanimous? Epstein. Stand on the function. The new guy. The new guy. All right. Actually, the old new guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he did the same thing I did. He went to the council, then he came back. So he's coming. I'm not going to say it. It's like a ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to just jump right in. Uh, the first item, though, on the agenda was the uh, withdrawal of. Uh, that's a formal withdrawal. This it's point. a formal withdrawal of, um, and I don't have the appeal number. It's 20, uh, yeah, 2558. Yes. So we have a letter from uh, Catherine Joyner, who was the designer for uh, uh, the Barber property. And that was the Barber, one, the garage. Uh, one Cliff Street, yeah, uh, uh, garage. Um, that was tabled uh, for further information. Uh, and also because of an error that I made on the uh, calculation of building area versus lot area. And so I found the right answer to that. I informed the um, appellant, and so they've withdrawn their application. Okay. So that ties that up. Okay, so that's awesome. We don't have any other applications. We don't have any other <laughs> And the new rules, new procedures are we're going to put a deadline on them. Yeah. The town council has not made a change yet. <coughs> we haven't made a change yet. Um, uh, it's a point of order that we're going to discuss. Uh, we've got it on the agenda to discuss with the town attorney amongst some other procedural matters, uh, which includes the extension from six months to a year for any um, appeal that you prove. That the county six month time frame on them would be good for a year. We yeah. talked about that a while ago, just to remind and tell you the speed of it. We're finding that a lot of people, because of the weather, because of getting getting help, getting work done, economy, the yep. economy, they just it's taking longer than six months <coughs> before they can break ground once they get approved, mm -hmm. and so we're they're having to come back for for extensions, extensions, and we're just gaveling them through, and rather than doing that, give them a year but no extension. This is for a building permit. Correct. Correct. Well, they had set once we approve the appeal, we approve the variance. Yeah. If they don't get started within six months, if they don't come and get their building permit right. and get started, so it's just for a variance. It, it would just be for those variance approvals. Um, How about a regular building permit? Well, the regular building permit is is good for six months, um, and and that's another issue that we've got to look at whether or not we want to have the, it has nothing to do with the zoning board but I, I feel six months is a little tight but there are others in our in our department that don't agree with me so that's a that's a discussion that doesn't really involve you guys but regardless of that we can still issue an extension to that six month period it's right in the ordinance that we can do that do we do we have the ability to say that they have to file for a building permit within Six months of when we approve, and then it would tick out at the same time at 12 months. 
because then it would start the six month clock on the it's an interesting issue um, <laughs> yeah I don't I don't want to muddy the waters too much okay um, because one of the other elements is that because of the beaches certain beaches Higgins has kind of an unwritten code that you don't do construction in the summertime right um, I don't know if it's a strict down at Pine Point or not I believe they bring it. it up the same way. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty good about it. Yeah. But uh, I know that that's a, that's a problem. People can't get they because of that sort of moratorium on construction through the summer months. That often plays havoc with that six month time frame. And mm -hmm. then you get the weather. Right. So um, as far as building permit, I don't know if we're going to change that or not. <coughs> um, it's a little different. If they get there, if they come in the winter months and they get their approval, you know, any time during the winter months, they don't have to apply for a building permit right away. They can time that so that, you know, they can fit that six months within that 12 month time frame right. and not have not be playing one against the other as much. So we yep. may not do anything with the building permit. We may just allow that 12 month period. And it's just, just a, it's, it's just a convenience thing so that you don't have to come back and put it on the agenda and they don't have to show up. And, you know, it, it just seems to make sense. It's and it's not doesn't cover things like the occupant if if it's a uh, in home occupation, it doesn't cover things like that. Right. But it'd be strictly for something that would involve with the building structure and all the other items. They still have to record their variance within ninety days when they receive it. That still has to be done. So, you know, it's it's covered in other statutory ways, but it just seems like that six month time frame they're either fighting the time frame for the building permit or the time frame for the variance. And they're also dealing with the the, uh, the state and uh, sometimes with the the DEP uh, uh, EPA and, mm -hmm. and Bami Corps and yeah. all that stuff. So you know, and a lot of times their design isn't completely done until they know they can actually do the projects. Right. You know, so they they haven't spent all the money on the design, so they may need another month or two to finalize some of those plans after they know they've gotten their variance to actually put the building where they want to put it. So yeah. I think it's, it's consistent with what we've been trying to do is work with the people. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and I forget how we got on that, that topic, but... Uh, um, just, uh, you were talking about the council and uh, some of the issues of the, whether or not they were bringing that forward. <laughs> right. So, we'll have, uh, hopefully by the next meeting, I'll have a little more guidance for you on how that's going to work or if you're going to go that way, but um, we, we do have some other procedural issues that we're going to talk about, make sure that we get those straightened around and um, hope to do that next week. Great. Uh, and just as other, before we get started on the Higgins Beach thing, I think Karen sent you all um, an email with the schedule for yes. the zoning board meetings on it, so you should, if you haven't seen it yet, it should be in your inbox. And you got one, you put one change after that, right? Uh, there was a change. She had to change the May 12th, uh, the May meeting to May 12th, which is a Thursday night. Uh, show when did that here? here? When did that go up, Brian? Uh, today. Okay. Today. You may not see that. Just know that it's it's there, and um, and also we have we have uh, two new uh, board members. We have uh, uh, Karen Shoup is going to be our first alternate. And of course, we welcome back Ed Blades, who served on the board, I guess, some years ago. I'm not exactly sure when that was, Ed, but you've been busy on the council and doing some other things too in the meantime. Mm -hmm. right. So welcome. Uh, and thank Ed's you. coming back in what position? Is he coming back as a? He's coming back, back as a full voting member. Full voting. Um, and so I, I believe, in, in because Mr. Uh, Loisel was terming out, uh, and and. Uh, did come and join us tonight, and I appreciate that. Um, he was going to serve until we filled those positions. So uh, Karen Shoup will be um, appointed on the 20th, I believe, the next council. The 20th. Yeah. So um, we still we still have an alternate, a second alternate vacancy. Well, he would still stay on. Then. He could stay on as yeah, 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 he's still. No on. Wait a minute. How about Mike? Um, okay, you got that's the one you well, got. Well, that's yeah, I guess you got straight that one out. And I don't, I don't <laughs> know how. Before you, does he show up as the voting yeah. member? Does he show on the list of the voting? He's members? not on the list. This is the list that Tony Justice, the town clerk, right. sent me, and and I asked her about Mr. Richard. Decided not to. 
Yeah. So you may be that third alternate. That's bizarre, Brian. That really is bizarre. You know what I'm And Karen may be huh? second oh, alternate. Yeah. And I may be <laughs> off the board. That's why you want to know it? What we can do is, uh, we, I'll, I'll talk with Tony tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think she took you off because I asked you that. You said you didn't know if you were coming back or not. So that's fine. You might not have shown it. <coughs> oh, you said something to her? Yeah. So she had oh, a great Leroy 300. Wow. Wow. Hey, two Brute. Hey, with me. <laughs> 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 I know it wasn't me. Wow. I know it wasn't me. Because I'm going to ask, how come you weren't on the list? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, it wasn't me. Because she asked. But the cold conversation, I was thinking, well, I haven't. Richard, if he gets back on the line here, Mr. Crockett, and you're going to be second off. Oh, no, I'm out now. No, because there's still seven. No, no, there isn't. I'm <laughs> gone now. No, you're not. One, two, three, four, five, six. Karen seven. is seven. Nice try, Mark. <laughs> I think he's got you. He's a better man than I am. Uh, I have a full house. <laughs> you have two pair. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's only gone for a few months. Exactly. It's true, it's true. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to come to each meeting just to like <coughs> monitor. And we'll we'll be back here. <laughs> <laughs> back here. <laughs> Never <laughs> make it funny face <laughs> and, and for the record. I think that'd be great. <laughs> for the record, given the fact this probably is, in that case, probably going to be your last meeting, isn't it? Yeah. We need to really congratulate you and thank you for the work you've done. You're a great chair. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, he's getting a plaque for you. Clearly, you never saw I any of the videos <laughs> no, <you laughs> when you weren't there. No, I just wanted mine. If I would have been more prepared, I would have had that for tonight. But we'll make a special presentation if you can make the next meeting. We'd like you to come. I don't know. I've got a big, big schedule. Oh, wow. It's already full. <laughs> but it, uh, it's important because you know something that makes a difference. You've spent, you've you've spent nine years. Nine. Nine years on this board. Every month. Barely missing any. Traveling back and forth, sometimes three hours uh -huh, from three and three quarters from Woodland. From Woodland, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, come to me. Uh, you've been yeah, such a great, dedicated to the member, and then you would be re-upping as soon as uh, that comes up. So that's good. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know he was already on the ballot. No. You already got it right down to the day. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, when, when we found out we didn't really have much on the agenda tonight, I asked around. Everybody thought they'd like to get a little more information on the, the new town of Scarborough Higgins Beach, Higgins Beach Character Based Zoning District. Is it official now? It is official. It was adopted and approved by council. It has been. It was. Effective immediately, so it's in effect now. Does that mean that lady can build her house now? In fact, we just did our first <laughs> review. You can ask if it's been it was for out. 12 Thesper Street. <laughs> 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 and uh, after a couple of three more tries, um, they were able to get something that met the standards. Of Excellent. The That's good news. Yeah, uh -huh. which is kind of where we sent them right from the start. It was yeah. kind of a. Yeah. That was only one five yeah. tries. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's only, what, five or six times coming back to you? <coughs> I lost track. Yeah, I don't know. The good news is they're getting what they want. And yeah. Uh, That's good uh, news. And it it's matches what the town expects. Right. So, good. So, um, Mark had uh, emailed me today and, and, and kind of had some suggestions on how he thought this might best benefit the board. And I talked a little bit to Ed about it before the meeting as well. And rather than to like walk you through every detail of the new ordinance, I'll get some of the basics, some of the high points. It's there. You ha you all have a copy of it uh, to read and digest. And at any point, if you have questions, shoot me an email, give me a call, we talk about it. Um, I don't want to go into all of the weeds of it, but what I want to try to concentrate on is how does this affect you and the way you do your business. The truth is, the stuff on the backside doesn't affect us. If it if it doesn't. Most of that there doesn't affect us because it'll be done in the backside. Right. So the question is what what in there does <coughs> affect the futures right. as opposed to uh, 
um, what we'll never see. Yeah, what you might see in typical variance is to this new ordinance. Yeah, and, and Height, and width, depth, yeah. all those flexibilities. So if everybody's okay that. with that, that's kind of where we'll focus. I don't want to kind of want to have this be a long thing mm -hmm. run out. I think we can cover it in, in less than an hour and, Great. and, and, and be, be done with it. And you may think of other questions and things as, as you go along. <coughs> Excuse me. My door is always open. You know where I am. So. Um, Let's just start by saying it, what used to be mostly R4 district in the old zoning ordinance and some R3 is now split into two different zones, really primarily one zone with a second zone that covers some of the commercial buildings that are down there. It's really kind of spot zoning. Is it, over, is it overlay or is it? Um, I'm going to, let me bring up a map. You said the word spot zoning? I, was I did utter those words. Wow. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, let's see, do I have that? <coughs> I, should, uh, I don't think I've got it. I think it's on, the, uh, it's on the website. I didn't bring it up yet. Well, I know what the four items are. The four items are the market at the end of yeah. Ocean yeah. Avenue, All right. Higgins Beach Inn, mm -hmm. the Breakers, and the Clubhouse. Now there is an apartment building <coughs> on Pearl Street that is going to remain an apartment building, but it's going to be that lot is going to remain a residential lot, I believe. How many units is, is that, that apartment true? building? Seven in there. Is that seven head? Seven apartments? Yeah, whatever it is. Is that is that your own? Pardon? Your own? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what you're seeing up on the screen, or, or, or whichever screen is most convenient for you to look at, you see these this coastal mixed use district that points to this darker brown area, and then the darker brown area down here, which I believe is the breakers. Um, and then there, as Ed said, this is the the market up on Spurwink. Mm -hmm. And was there one other place? Oh, there's two lots. There's the hotel lot and the lot right beside it. That's right. the, is it the parking lot? That's yeah. the clubhouse, isn't it? Isn't it? The, mm -hmm. Is the clubhouse right there? Oh, it is, yes. I believe. Yes. So, so those are, those are the only mixed-use districts. The rest of it is all coastal, coastal residential district one. So, it basically that encompasses almost everything that was R four. So we just changed it because we didn't want to change the R four district to match it. So we created these two new zones. Um, that won't have, you know, that won't be anything that you'll you'll be probably dealing with too much. Um, and back to the code. So here's your coastal residential, and the intent, purpose, so on and so forth. The permitted building types are listed there, and uh, building standards are in Article Three, which we'll get to in a moment. Your lot dimensions now. Um, instead of talking about minimum lot area, which you're more familiar with. We simply have minimum and maximum width and depth. And we made it 48 feet minimum width because of the geometry. Most of the lots, or the majority of the lots, are 50 by 100. But sometimes the geometry doesn't work out so that they actually have 50 feet of frontage. If you look at the survey plan, it's like 49.5. Yeah. So we made it 48 to make sure it was safe enough to get most of those 50 foot plus or minus wide lots. And and this is on both, um, both of the zones? Uh, it is on both of the zones, I believe, good question. Yes. Yeah, that same minimum lot width on both of the zones. Uh, I think it may be that some of the mixed uses are probably on lots that are bigger than that, but the idea was um, that those are grandfathered, and so they can continue to do the things that they're doing we didn't want to make a large lot because we didn't want people combining lots to do a mixed use type oh, good. thing. So we're trying to make it more uniform and consistent and actually do away with people combining lots to do bigger development and make it more in the style of the 50 by 100 Higgins Beach lots. Does this have any effect on some of the two houses on one lot situations? We it may. Any of those? It may. Um, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. I don't know how many of those there are. There, there are a few. There are also some that have developed on one lot and, and had a combined other lot that was empty that they couldn't do anything with because 
of the lot standards that were in place at the time, which didn't allow for a 48 foot wide street frame. So, the, can so they now they that? can separate and split them, and, that wow. and there's actually going to be <coughs> maybe two or three new lots created because of that. It won't be a lot, but there will be a few. Wow. So aren't there some lots down here that are 100 feet? There are some that are combined already. So that so if it's more than 98 feet, it's not going to. Yeah, that, and we did that on purpose. Okay. <laughs> um, that's that's so people wouldn't combine. See, we, you can uncombine now, but we don't want people I combining agree. together. Um, and so. Um, now, could, yeah, you want me to that? If I buy a house and it's in my name, yeah, and I buy another house right beside it and it's in my name, don't they automatically merge for tax purposes? I thought it was state regulation. If they're non-conforming lots, only if they're non-conforming. Only if they're non-conforming. <coughs> but if they if they both been, de been developed, no. If one of those lots is undeveloped and non-conforming, then it does get us away. But if they've both got houses on them, they're not one lot anymore. Okay, so they didn't separately. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, what you're going to see in the ordinance now, uh, we talked a little bit about the lot dimensions. The thing that you guys will be most dealing with, I think, or, or, or will, will relate most to what you do, is you're, you're familiar with the 15 foot side setback, the 15 foot rear setback, and I think for the most part, 30 foot front setbacks on the front properties. We now have a uh, a primary front setback, and this is for corner lots. We have a primary front setback and, and the secondary front setback, which happen to be the same. We don't distinguish between them, but we do we, we do give them the ability to to designate what they're. They, primary they can front choose. Is. Yeah. Uh, and and so now, for the principal building placement, whoops, that's the I'm in the coastal district. I want to go back to the residential because that's what you're going to see most. Uh, the primary front setback is 18 feet minimum, okay, to 21 feet maximum. Where we used to try to shove them back to 30 feet or as far back as, as practical, now we're actually saying we don't want you any further back from the street than 21. And that is to try to preserve those backyards that we were forcing people to build back into, mm -hmm. which was closing up view corridors and all kinds of, creating all kinds of problems that were not consistent with the development pattern. So now we're bringing them back to the street in the more historic development patterns of Higgins Beach. That's what the primary dwelling, the primary building, which is the box, the main part of your house. Okay. Include the porch or no? I'll get to that. Okay. Right. <laughs> Good question. Um, so, so the primary or principal building is the main box of the house. So you locate that, let's just say you locate that at that 18 foot minimum distance from your front property line. And you can also locate it a minimum of eight feet from your side property line. This will this is one of the impacts that you guys will feel the most. For a lot of whether it's whether it's a teardown rebuild project or maybe it's one of those lot splits that will happen and where no no building has existed maybe for years and years, maybe never, they will now be able to build a house eight feet from the property line. Used to be fifteen. So there will be a ton of variance requests that won't ever you won't ever have to look at that you used to have to look at all the time. Mm -hmm. Almost in every case. Probably. And the neighbors are comfortable with the with that that event. The through the public meetings, the, the comments that we got, almost everybody was in favor of reducing those setbacks because it made sense now. And what it also allows you to do is if you can squeeze that up to eight feet on one side, it creates a driveway and parking area on the other side. It doesn't allow you to fill that whole space. Only one house. side, you're saying. Yep. But it can be either side. But it can be on one side. That yep. makes sense. It, it now, the fire department doesn't have an issue with the two, uh, the property and the adjacent property. Excellent both choose question. Eight. Mr. Lordell, this is why we need you so badly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> any structure, any dwelling that is built closer than 15 feet to the property line in accordance with um, our ordinances and our fire department's regulations, will have to be built with fire rated material. Like a garage versus a house <coughs> kind of material? Or 
a one hour burn or two hour burn? It's some of the material. It's fire rated material. Uh, we're not going to specify what fire rated material. So it might be They're going to look at the flame spread rating. Okay. And, uh, so it'll be, it might be uh, the, the, the one that comes to mind is. Cementitious. We're going back to that stuff. Cementitious boards. Dens glass is a material that's used quite frequently. Uh, and the other thing is they don't vent the soffits, they're hard soffits. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some construction concerns that you have to deal with because now you've lost some ventilation for your attic and you have to do it a different way. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's to prevent fire from entering that structure that's closer than 15 feet. Mm -hmm. Why 15 feet? Because the NFPA fire codes deal with buildings that are closer than 30 feet from each other. Okay, so if, if you had 15 feet and 15, that's one of the reasons why we had the 15 foot setback. That puts structures 30 feet from each other. On the front, on the street side, you've got the street protecting. Nobody can build on the street, so you're fine there. If there's uh, public land or common land that you can't build on, you'd be fine there. But wherever there's a possibility of a dwelling existing, in, in most cases, there is going to be a dwelling exist if you tear down and rebuild a house. We're going to be looking at that fire rated material. Doesn't mean the other house has to be fire rated, but you do. And we also look at window placement to try to make sure that glass isn't right across from glass. Good. So, so there will be some concerns that won't be your concerns, but there'll be our concerns. <coughs> but you need to know about that. Uh, so that's one of the things we'll be looking at. And we won't even look at that necessarily at the um, administrative review process, which I'll get to in a minute. A new wrinkle in the whole thing. We'll look at that at the build at the time we're looking at the building permit okay. application. So good question. And uh, yes. <laughs> so um, so we have the primary uh, setback now, and we also have a secondary front setback. That's that was the one I, I I was wondering. I was on the other zone. So so in the residential zone, on your secondary front, if you're a corner lot, you get to be 12 feet. So that's a big change because we used to require two identical frontages. I thought that was the case. It used to be yeah. 20, 20, 20. <laughs> right. So you had to be 30 feet from Bayview and 30 feet from Ocean, you know. Which basically which, gave you a. Yeah. You know, on a 50 by 100 lot, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> and, and when the applicant comes to us, if the address, it goes by the address as the primary? So when they generally say speaking, okay. generally speaking, I would say yes. That's a, a kind of a fine detail that I'm not 100% sure about. <coughs> I, I would not uh, want to bet that every house is oriented to their street address. In other words, the, the clearly the front of the house may not actually be on the street where their address is. Okay. So they may have the option to say, even though my address is here, the front, front of here. my house okay. is here. This is my primary. Right, because you did say the, they would have the option to choose what their primary is. That's, so that's the way I'm interpreting it. And, okay. it, and again, it's a, there's still a lot of questions I have about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't stand here pretending to know all the answers. But uh, I think it's great we're, you've we're taken on all you have. I mean, uh, I, I, and, and it'll be a learning process um, as we go. But my, my interpretation is yes, you do get to choose, but it's got to make sense. Obviously, if it doesn't look like the front of your house, then that's <coughs> probably not your primary mm -hmm. front. Right. If, 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 the, if the clearly the front of your house is the address side of your house, I don't think we have any questions there. It's, it's solved. And anybody buying a property <coughs> where that's already been established, they can change it. Some guy comes in the, f in the future and buys that and says, I don't want that. I want to move the house this way. He can think, change that? I think it would be possible. Yeah, okay. I, I don't see why that would be a big issue. Again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure yeah. on that, but I, I think that's the intent. Okay. You get to have a primary and a secondary. And if you choose you want it the other way and you're yeah. going to rip the building down, yeah. you can do it the other way? Right. Now, you're, you're going to provide them opportunities to make decisions or you'll m be making oh, yeah. decisions for them at times? Uh, it's, I think it's a pretty interactive process. We're not going to be just sitting here dictating what's going to happen. <coughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're going to have these. They're going to have a. In fact, we've created a checklist, a self checklist for the applicant, yeah. just for the design review phase of this. Not even getting to the building permit yet. Just trying to navigate this ordinance. So there's all of these little nuances now that there never used to be, and we're providing them that checklist so that they go down through and. We cite the ordinance where you can find that information. So anywhere. they're really, you're really forcing them to make all the decisions within specific parameters. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. We give them the Therefore, tools. Therefore, 
they can't come back to the Zoning Board of Appeal and question any of the decisions that you guys made. Well, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> the Zoning Board of Appeal does exist for the purpose of administrative uh, appeals. If somebody feels that we have judged an error, they, you guys serve as that second sounding board for that. Yeah. And that's, that's up in a couple of times. Yeah, and I mean that's well. Do you do you see that as a, a potential? I don't. I don't think you're going to see that any more than you have with any other part of our zoning ordinance. Yeah, okay. it's it's never been. You know, I, I can think of two or three in the last ten years, yeah. maybe even longer, and they weren't on issues like this. Yeah. They weren't on a debate of what you could or couldn't do. It was on right. Um, you need to clean up your backyard. And I think I think one of the good things, and in fact, the review yeah. that we did with the 12 Vesta lot, which we just did the week before, I think it was in between Christmas and New Year's, is when we we actually did it. Kind of wrote the wrote the findings and said, yeah, you finally made it. Um, uh, there were a few things that were sort of like, wow, not really sure, you know, but we we rationalized it, we negotiated with the designer. We came to some middle ground, and we felt it met the intent of the ordinance because the ordinance. There are still some things in the ordinance that sort of don't nail it right down, so it's up for interpretation. So we try to we try to figure out what was the intent and what makes sense, and and I expect we'll find those things from time to time, and we're making lists of those things, and we will try to better define and refine and kind of get it. The bigger challenge might be that they don't follow. What they say they're going to do, and I think that's going to be where we're going to get into some issues. Well, and that's you bring up a good point. One of the discussions we had is, you know, we've got we've got two full-time code enforcement officers who are not going to be a part of this administrative review because they've got other things to do. So this there's going to be uh, probably three of us: the town planner, myself, and uh, the commercial fire and building inspector uh, for the fire rating issues and some of those other things. So. The three of us will probably be doing these reviews. The two guys that will be going out and inspecting won't know what we've all agreed to here and written down necessarily. They won't be intimately familiar. So I'm going to end up probably doing most of the inspections on these at least short term. But, but shouldn't this stuff show up on the drawings? It, it, well it should, but you still got to verify it. True. You know, like True. for example, there we'll get into some of this stuff. I, again, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but mm -hmm. I'll hit on some of this stuff. There are things like setbacks for dormers. There has to be so much. Uh, three feet, or actually four feet four from feet. the ends of yeah. the edge of the roof. So I mean that has to be field verified. Yeah, it can show it on the plans, but you know how it works when you get oh, in the yeah. field and people are. When you're doing, when you're doing that, from the four foot point, just for that. Let's not question. let's not get into that right now. Okay. Okay. Let's let's keep pushing forward. Otherwise, I don't want to make this any longer than this. I want to okay. give you the basics and then talk about mm -hmm. the types of uh, variances <coughs> that you'll see. But anyway, so so first important point. Variable setbacks, okay, <laughs> and much smaller setbacks, both frontage and side. Yeah. So, so again, that will limit or reduce the number of variance appeals that you guys should have to hear when you stop and think about the variances that you have heard. Right. It's almost always involving a front setback or a side setback. Will it be variance or will it be rejections that it will eliminate? <laughs> you, you guys are right on it tonight. You got great questions. Some of the same questions I have that I don't have answers to. <laughs> the limit, the way I look at it right now, our limited reduction of yard size variance is an option. Even in the shoreland zone, it's an option. You can't get it for the shoreland setback, but you could get it for a side setback or anything that isn't regulated by DEP or some other entity. It's available to every residential lot in Scarborough. Even prior to 1970? Well, well, no. If it qualifies, okay. if it meets the standards, in other words, I think the house has to be there prior to July 3rd, 1991. Yeah. Okay, that's the cutoff date. Anything built after 91 doesn't apply. So, first thing, you got, you do have some older homes down there that would qualify whether or not they're going to be doing a project where that is actually what they can use because it doesn't apply if you tear it down and rebuild. You can't use a limited reduction of yard size because you 
Now, you've taken the grandfathered structure and wiped it off the face of the earth. So but if it would burn down, then they could. Uh, if it burns down, according to our ordinance, you can build it back in its same footprint within 12 months. So there's no need to get a limited reduction of yard size at that point. So essentially people would want to leave that one wall up. That's, that's where you might find it. Uh, if they, but, but because of the reduced setbacks, I don't think that they now have a very good argument for the, one of the, the criteria in that. You know what I mean? I think we've reduced <coughs> setbacks enough and we've allowed for that secondary structure, that accessory structure, which we'll get to right now, if you look at the accessory structure, under lot standards, you have principal building and accessory building placement. The primary front setback for the accessory building is 40 feet. So you're, you're back on the lot, 40 feet. Your rear setback is three feet. So you can really tuck that accessory shed or garage or whatever, you can really tuck that back into the corner of the lot. Now. Almost treat them like a fence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that's how a lot of them were built in the first place. They were built right up against the line or very close to it, really tucked them back in there, and that created a little privacy in the backyard. And are there elevation requirements on the accessory unit? So you're not yeah. taking away the visual um, acuity through that? There, uh, there um, that's a great question. Uh, I don't <coughs> think we, power. But I think we, we, yeah. we limit them to the number of stories they can be. So if you've got a two and a half story, you can have a two and a half story exit. Uh, no, no. Yeah, because that was the benefit of moving the building in the front to the front of the lot. Now mm -hmm. if we let them build big out back, you've taken any visual line right. behind the house out again. It's just like filling the whole lot again. One story out building, <coughs> one story carriage. There you go, perfect. <coughs> okay. yep. The carriage house, you can see the one story, you have to go back to the de definition of story. It could actually and be a one story. and a half. So you could gotcha. have attic. You could use that yeah. space underneath yeah. the roof. Yeah. Okay. What is that? Is that height wise? Is that 18 feet? Uh, I they go, they I go don't from, know. You go from the Good question. middle of the right roof line. Is that what yeah. it is? Same as yeah. Let's not don't don't ask too many questions. Right. Well, I could just I see your point. Make an A-frame out of yeah. it and. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. well I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah. I'll get to that. Don't jump ahead. <laughs> Sorry. We're never going to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> never. Really. See, we're here to challenge you. That's what we do. <laughs> that's the <a> class. <laughs> you know, if you just show up, you challenge me. Are <laughs> 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 home occupation still allowed in, a, in this zone? Uh, yep. Yep. Theoretically, they could be. Yeah. Yep. Um, so let's 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 continue from where I. Was where we figured we got. Thoroughly confused, you don't yeah. know where you are anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's rough. Yeah. Yeah, how come he's not getting <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. that? That <laughs> could be a race. He's probably thinking the same thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, why isn't he getting it? Finally, yeah. finally, he's not <laughs> shooting at me. I kind of like it. Um, okay, so accessory buildings have their own standards. You understand that, and they, again, they're reduced as well. Yeah. Set back. So there's a, another issue that you've probably dealt with before: is accessory buildings, garages, you know, those types of things. So there's, you know, we've already eliminated about 85 percent of the variance appeal that you guys Not have good. heard in the beach communities over the last 10 years. Yeah. And you don't see that three foot being a huge problem with neighbors. They don't think it because they went. This, this is all. This yeah. is all vetted out by them. I mean, it's really we're, designed we're, by the neighbors. We went based on the public input that we got. Ed right. was a part of that process. Um, was everybody happy? No. You know, you want. Do you expect everybody to be happy? It's never going to happen. Right. But the majority of the people spoke, and this was what they were, they were in favor okay with it. Yeah. Because it, you know, there are a few that want to push the envelope and they're not so married to the character of the Higgins Beach. They don't really know what the character is. They haven't been there that long, whatever, for whatever reason. But there's a lot of long-time residents down there and property owners down there who really feel the character was going away. And that's why we didn't just deal with building setbacks. We dealt with the character issues too. Because you can't just take a two and a half story, three story structure 
and plop it eight feet from the property line and expect everybody to like it. And you remember this, uh, this goes all the way back to Terry Dewan. Remember Terry Dewan, the, one of the architects that did a lot of work with the uh, moving the houses up closer to... Oh, the two separate houses that were... No, this is a, he was an architect. He did a lot of work for the town earlier for a while. He was doing a lot of stuff, uh, for, say, just the, the more vis um, vision planning. I don't know if it was an architect of some type, but he did a lot of stuff. Well, that's what you know. That's what want. these guys helped with, helped with too. And, and we did a lot of which do you like kind of things. You know, they showed them different examples, and so the the groups that participated chose what they felt best represented. It was the a, a very very interesting process yeah. for the for the people that lived down there. Uh, it was extremely thorough. I mean, they walked around the neighborhood as a group and discussed different things. Left their holsters at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, so will everybody always be happy? No, but we think, you know, this this came from the feedback we got. Yep. And so for those that aren't happy, I'm sorry. This is what you <clears throat> got because the majority spoke. And this is what you got. I had the pro I didn't I intentionally did not get involved with it because I don't it doesn't involve us. But I hearing you went to a lot of the meetings, hearing about the meetings, hearing the dialogue, hearing you talk about it. Yep. Everything I've heard you went to a few, you went to a couple of them. I went to cover. Yeah. So, so the other thing we did in this district that I think is important, it doesn't directly impact you folks, is we, we also took some time to do coastal development districts, okay? So we have a shoreland overlay, and we put in there what some of the major things that you have to deal with in the shoreland are. So under, uh, this is still under Article 3 coastal overlay zones, we, we, we talk about shoreland. If you're within 75 feet from the resource, or if you're within 75 to two, uh, if you're more than 75 but less than 250 feet from the resource, we have two sort of separate things that you need to worry about. And inside of 75 feet, you're dealing with a 30% expansion issue uh, and some limited uh, coverage um, for, for lot coverage. And then when you get beyond the 75 feet, you no longer have to worry about the 30% expansion, but you do have to worry about your development coverage of non-vegetated surfaces. And the resource, just, just from a global perspective, they're not talking about, I know there's none on this area, but they're not talking about streams, brooks, this would be, or, or would resource it Resource protection and coast in, uh, in, in the ocean, okay. basically the two. The two uh, you have a lot of wetland marsh, um, um, so, th but the, what we did, the, the, the we negotiated with the DEP. We got the development coverage increased to 35 percent from 20. Okay, and, and we were able to do that because we surveyed a number of properties, and that came out to be about the average wow. coverage of buildings, driveways, porches, decks, anything that wasn't growing something, came out to 35 percent. Also, the fact that we have uh, public sewer and public storm drainage, all of those issues, and public water. So all of those issues combined to uh, give us a much smaller lot size because typically the state requires 40,000 square feet for a residential lot in the shoreline zone. So we don't typically do you know, no, no. like that. Yeah. But we don't need it because we don't have to site a well and a septic and, right. and all of that. So we were able to um, get them to agree. They haven't officially agreed, but they've agreed in in in, uh, in uh, theory to it. And so it's just a matter of reviewing the council's decision and, and all of that stuff, and they'll ratify that. So we're pretty happy about that because that was another thing that you guys were always coming up against was lot coverage uh, issues. And that supersedes the shoreland zoning. Or that that we actually, actually had that made in the shoreland zone for <coughs> these districts. Okay, guess so. That you'll find that in our shoreland ordinance as well. Okay, so now if the shoreland overlay. Yes. This. Yeah. Now, if the shoreland <coughs> in the future, if the shoreland zone ordinance only gets modified, only in Higgins Beach. <coughs> only in Higgins Beach. Only in Higgins Beach. Yeah. If the shoreland zone ordinance gets modified for a different reason, will this ordinance automatically get updated to meet that requirement? In other words, you've got the requirement yeah, we'll in have this. To, yeah, that's right. If, okay. if something were to dramatically change, which impacts what we've got in here, we do, we do kind of put a qualifier in here that you need to consult 
the shoreland ordinance. Okay, there you for go. All the details. We and just if it gets more strict, then it says right here under A. This section is for reference only. Refer to Chapter 405C, the shoreland zoning ordinance, for specific standards and requirements. Yeah, that covers. It. But but we felt it was important to give them a snapshot because sure. whenever I was talking to somebody doing a development project in Higgins Beach, I had to go through this litany of other agency or other regulations, not just Scarborough zoning. Yeah. And not just the building code, but now you got to worry about sand dune. Are you in the front dune? Are you in the back dune? Are you in a, a, an erosion hazard area? Are you in the floodplain? Are you in the shoreland? Oh, you know, and it on and, and on and on. So, so we tried to simplify <laughs> it a little bit. Yeah. We didn't try to say everything here, but we tried to simplify. So A is shoreland overlay. B is floodplain. So we've got all the flood zones that you might fall into. And and what those how those <coughs> impact your development? Yeah. Most Northern importantly, it's going to be elevation. Those are the newly updated ones. No, there there are no newly updated ones. I thought we're they were changing. We're still in limbo. Okay. That's yeah. yeah. yeah it's going to be in time. Yeah. It's going to be 2017 at least before we have new maps. But let's say that stuff does get updated. In order to update this, we just change it, and then it has to go in front of the board again one yeah. more time to get. Because those ordinances would yeah. have to be amended at the same time we'd amend these. Gotcha. Do it. Lock, stock, and barrel. Some of those changes I've seen look like they're going to be pretty radical. Yeah, but we're not we're not talking about that tonight. Okay. And then sand dunes, uh, frontal dune, back dune, and erosion hazard area. Those are regulations we have absolutely no control over. The floodplain and the shoreline we do. Those are ours to regulate. The dunes are DEPs to regulate. That's a Natural Resource Protection Act thing. So we say again, this section for reference only refer to yeah. the main DEP uh, regulations for specific standards and requirements. Are you coaching them through that when we get there? Yeah, that how you do yeah, we are, and in fact, we're still talking with DEP because I'm not sure that I like how we've described some of these, um, especially under the coverage. I'm not happy with what they say. I've read their regs, and I don't feel that we're reflecting exactly what the regs are saying. So I've sent this language to DEP and asked them if their staff could review it again. Consultants put a lot of this together. Quite frankly, they're dealing with things they don't have to deal with very often because. Two of them are from Massachusetts, and <laughs> this is okay. a man thing. <laughs> so, so you know, I, I didn't expect them to get it, you know, to, to hit it under the park with it. So we're we're fine tuning it as we speak, um, and we'll probably do that as a policy thing. And we've got two or three other, well, probably a handful of other tweaks we need to make to this. So we'll probably gather those up and do it all at once. How are we dealing with the yeah buts? The what? The yeah buts. Somebody <coughs> comes in and says, uh, yeah, but it says right there. It, why they Don't talk to the EP. <laughs> Take it up with them. Sir. Yeah. It's <laughs> not ours. <our> right. <laughs> <laughs> so like the fire marshal. Call yeah. Yeah, call yeah. And Gus and I see. Then we have standards for all buildings. Um, and so that talks about how we measure height. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to invite you guys to, to look that over at your leisure rather than dwell on it. We, we cover building height. Uh, we can measure it in stories. We can measure it in feet. And in the shoreland, it's measured a little bit differently than we do out of the shoreland. We talk about ground floor elevation and how that's um, identified. Uh, height exceptions, such as roof-mounted radio antennas, transmission equipment, vents, exhausts, skylights, et cetera, et cetera. Um, features, pitched roofs must be symmetrically sloped in accordance with roof, roof pitch standards for building type. And refers to a table, which I'll show you in a minute. Oh, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Symmetrically. In other words, you, um, you, you wouldn't have one this way and one this way. They, they're going to be symmetrically sloped. So we have like a, a, is it like a, a salt, salt box style? Is that yeah, what yeah. that means? Uh, right. Okay. Um, with the exception of the bungalow type, which has a unique roof composition, so we've tried to identify those roofs that wouldn't typically be symmetrical. Okay, fenestration is the glass area or the open area in a wall. What's the word? Fenestration. Every month you come up with a new word for us. <laughs> 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 I made that one. Architect's word. Yeah. James is heard it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so we deal with that now. It's basically on the front facade of the building. You know that one? <laughs> 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 hey, it was I'm putting on the facade right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm from, uh, we have the St. John Valley. You've all heard of the St. John Valley. And up 
there, there was a guy that was running the CDBG block, the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program, and they used to have a facade program where you could put funds aside for businesses to fix up the fronts of their businesses on Main Street. Did I mean? But he was he was a little bit French, and he he called it the Facati, the Facati <laughs> program. <laughs> <laughs> So every time I say that word, I'm thinking Facati. What do you need to complain on that one? <laughs> um, it's a soft C. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the roof table, 4.1a. So it lists all the different. Did I skip one? No. Okay, that's. Here's your your different house types: coastal cottage, bungalow, house, in shop house, neighborhood farm, mm -hmm. different types of roofs over the top: gable, hip, bungalow, gable, <coughs> shed, flat. And those are your roof pitch ranges, minimums and your maximums. So that's something we'll cover in that administrative review process. So we'll be expecting them to identify the roof pitches on their plans that they bring in. And we'll, it's another checklist item that we have to go over to see. And again, this goes to character. We're not trying to get in everybody's business, but, but if you didn't build them to these, these standards, they could be way out of character and create something that just didn't look in place down there. And, and the character they're trying to appeal to is still the average person. Give us a new word that we wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> what, what is the character of the word? Village? Is, it, is, it, is it a village style? Is it a traditional um, seacoast? It's a seacoast sea community, yeah. Seacoast like village. village. <coughs> I, I don't really know what the, well, how you can modify it. It's got its own style. Primarily, what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep the image of how the community was originally built. All the cottages, if you look at most of the streets, all the cottages are 10 or 12 feet off the street and yeah. they're all tilted just a bit and everybody's got a view of the ocean. Yeah. Um, so that's what they were trying to do. They, were, they wanted to keep this and they actually did a good the job. The <laughs> the they did the a good job too at in, in kind of identifying what those ranges yeah. for the, the, the different pitches. Yeah. I mean, they didn't just pull the stuff out of, out of the air. Um, we looked at what was down there. They qualified it, quantified it, and they, they created ranges. So anybody that says, "Oh, it's too restrictive," well, you've got to listen. For for a, a coastal cottage, you can go from a nine twelve to a fourteen twelve roof. Quite a range. It's quite a range. <laughs> if you know if yeah. you know what you're talking about, yeah. and you're talking about roof pitch, that's quite a range. So I mean, it's not saying you got to have just a 912. Right. You know, it's giving you some some leeway to do different things for different kinds of roofs. Um, and then we have roofs by components. So so we talked about the principal building, the box that goes first on your lot. Then we have components. <coughs> Components include projecting porch, integral porch, engaged porch, and I can see we got a spelling typo there, and a gauged porch, <laughs> balcony, <laughs> bay window, dormer window, cross gable, roof walk, retail awning, canopy stoop deck, rear addition, side addition, estate addition. We'll further on, it describes all of those different components a little bit more for you, but those all have roofs as well, or most of them do. Uh, and, and so there's a roof pitch range for each of those as well. When would the retail awning come into play down there? Retail awning would be on those commercial buildings like yeah. the inn. Just the ones that are kind of grandfathered? I can't imagine someone's going to build another retail facility. Down. Well, I mean, you have, to, you have to give them the ability to improve their properties just like the residential mm -hmm. people do. So we wanted to also have some character components for them. Um, and so in the next table is sort of a summary table, table 42A. It shows you what a coastal cottage might look like. This is just an example. It's not the only way it can look, but it gives you some example. Coastal cottage, bungalow, house, et cetera, et cetera. And then we look at the accessory building types, the one-story outbuilding, which could be a garage, or the one-story carriage house. It could be a garage or a shed. The one-story carriage house could be a garage with an apartment over the top of it, tucked into the, the upper story. Or it could just simply be a second cottage for those properties that have already have that. Okay. Um, so this is still allowing for a... It's a still allowing for an accessory, an accessory unit. Yeah. yeah. Even with those lot sizes as well. Yeah. But it, keep in mind and remember that DEP didn't sign off on accessory units in the shoreline. So, no. so 
so it would only be available to those those folks that um, are outside the shoreline so unless they already had it to two family um, then we go into article 4 with the building standards and types and standards you can see here um, we have labeled these dimensions A, B, C, and D. So when you go down into the table and you want to know what building width is, it's shown here A. So A is 18 feet maximum on the coastal cottage. So when you stop and think about it, you can be 8 feet from the property line, then you can be 18 feet. So now you've only taken up uh, 26 feet. Did I do my math right? 26 feet of your relatively close to 50 foot wide lot. So it still leaves you some room to do some things. Um, but it also says that you can't be any bigger than 18 feet with a coastal cottage. So you talked about, uh, I think Ed was mentioning, or somebody was asking, is it interactive? Do, do, do they have the ability to make their decisions? The first thing they're going to decide is what kind of house are they building? Mm -hmm. Is it a coastal cottage? Does it meet these dimensions? If not, then it goes to the next so one. That is you know? And so I it sounds like modular homes. It, it kind of is. It's putting Lego blocks together. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, I'll just encourage you to look down through those. Um, it talks about story heights there, uh, the number of stories, the maximum number of stories for that style of building, okay? And the amount of fenestration, the percent of fenestration they can have in the ground story and the upper story as a percentage of the overall total wall area. And then we also talk about frontages and yards. And the reason that's important is you, you could probably remember there are a few properties down there that have pavement right in the front of their building. It looks like the street just continues right into the front of the building and they park their cars in front of the building. We want parking and driveways to be to the side of the building so that the fronts of the building that we bring them closer to the street looks like old time Main Street with the porches and you don't see automobiles until you get by the house and they're tucked in nicely to the side and behind. We even encourage shared driveways with a little bit of a divider, you know, to kind of break that. So, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, there's a number of different ways to, to skin that cat, if you will, but we're definitely not going to be approving front parking right on, right on the street or right off the street and immediately in front of the house. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, so here's some example of what a coastal cottage could look like with some components added. So you see the main box, I didn't bring my pointer, but um, the main box is in the center and then this has a wraparound porch. The one on the lot above it has some side wings on it that come off. So there's talk about, you know, not it's not cookie cutter, but one thing that Ed and I were talking about before the meeting was you gotta understand that when you um yeah where where did i find that ed now that I, um yeah there it is when you look at the components and under the standards it says a minimum of two components must be applied to the base building massing including a porch as required under the residential yard frontage standards every new house has to have a porch every new Every new house of that style, and I think that's pretty consistent through all of the styles. Uh, what about the ones that have to be lifted up? Huh? What about the ones like we had a few weeks ago that have to be lifted yeah, up? Yeah, porches can be lifted up too. Uh huh. But you got to you got to understand, it needs to look like this, but it doesn't have to function that as a porch. Question. It can be open to the inside of the structure, but what it does is it prevents two-story encroachments up to eight feet from the property. And the, and the porch is the part that allows it to go to eight feet. The porch is what allows it to go to 18, <coughs> eight feet. You got 18 at the house, you can, in, in your porch dimensions have to be a minimum of six and a maximum of 10, so you can be as close as eight feet. Now, the porch can be enclosed. It can be enclosed. Left in. It can be open. Can they have It heat? can be partially enclosed and partially open. Okay. Can you what? Can they have heat? It could be last in. Yeah. It can be an extension sure. of okay. a, another room in there. Okay. But, but you also have to meet the fenestration requirements too. So you, right. you're not going to see something that looks like a porch with no windows in it. Can right. you imagine how bad that would look? Right. Yeah. So that's it's going to look like a porch. Want. Yeah. Uh, uh, fenestration. 
Yeah, so, so, so even though it doesn't have that back wall, especially it's cold. Even though it doesn't yeah. have that back wall, it doesn't have to have that back wall. It can. It can be your classic open front porch. Right. But, but it could also be an additional living area. Okay. In this example here, the the, which one I've got here, the coastal cottage one. That's eight feet, but those steps are actually closer than eight feet. Yeah. We'll get we'll get to that. Yeah, kind of keep moving along. Yeah, <laughs> slowing us up. <laughs> My friend. So we we've got that for each each house. I'm not going to dwell on each one. So I just want you to be familiar with what the components are and what they do. So we have different setbacks for components, and we even have different setbacks for steps and stoops, as Mark just pointed out. Um, and so we deal with all of that. That's because I'm a stoop. You're stoop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second I'm just going to breeze through these house types and just quickly hit on the uh, components because right after we get through the base buildings, here's your shop house. Um, that's what a shop house looks like there. Pretty shop. Uh, <laughs> shop. <laughs> shop. <laughs> um, neighborhood store. What makes, that, what makes that a shop house compared to the, the one that's the house? Read the, read the uh, ordinance. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the fenestration. I get it. There you go. <laughs> you stoop. <laughs> Second emotion. Yeah. Accessory buildings, and you can see the placement of the accessory building deep into the corner and back of the lot. Um, one story carriage house. And then we do have a. Uh, where do we get in here? Building components. On the accessory units. The four feet, is four feet, you said? Three feet. Mm -hmm. How many feet from? Oh, three feet. feet. Is it from the eave? It's going to be from the closest part of the structure. So, yeah. I just like the eave, just like a real one. Um, here's the projecting porch. Those are. Okay, so here's your depth dimensions, height dimensions, permitted encroachment. You can go into 10 feet into the setback. So, you have your main house is at 18 feet, let's say. Your porch can encroach 10 feet into that setback. That puts it eight feet from the property. It took me the longest time to get a handle on that encroachment. And, and then that doesn't include the stairs. It doesn't include the stairs. Okay. Because you can see uh, encroachment. Uh, no, I'm, I apologize. I was thinking we got the letters mixed up because height is height should be B on the drawing and it's C. So that's a little screw to fix that. <laughs> Would the flood plain elevation issues that we have, what would you predict would be the maximum number of steps off the front? I mean, it wouldn't be something like 10, would it? We wouldn't have a building structure that would be that high? Well, there, I mean, there, there are a number of different ways to deal with that if you have a super elevated structure due to flood plain. Yeah. The stairs can, I mean, Generally speaking, a lot of people will put the stairs underneath the house and going into the house from underneath where it's posted piers, pilings. You'll actually be high enough that you'll you'll enter underneath the house or the stairwell will be built into that area. Can so you that you don't have to gotcha. get out into the street with your steps. So for instance, on this one here, that's using an example of four steps. That would typically be a landing style, wouldn't it? For, four for, steps. A, for, a, for a bulk of the properties, that that's probably going to be adequate to get into your house. Can they happen? Can they have a four foot by four foot? Just let, me get, let me get to it. Let me trying to get to it. Sorry. Stop trying to move me. Thanks for moving us along. I'm doing the best I can to keep this. Here. I know. Uh, here's he's, been, the, he's been breaking the whole time. <laughs> so here's a bunch of different porches. He goes around the block. We deal with them again. We deal with decks. <laughs> we deal with bay windows. We deal with balconies. We deal with dormers. And that's, there's a, an example of A, you can see the set gable end setback, four feet minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay, And B is the ridge line setback, so it has to be dropped down from the ridge line. It can't connect to the same uh, peak. Yeah. Okay. However, a cross gable can connect at the peak. It's a little different than a dormer, and that's what a cross gable would, would look like, and it deals with that in width, maximum width, uh, etc. Uh, roof walk, which you do see a few of those down at Higgins. There's your awning. And, and see, uh, notice over here under the dimensions, we have permitted encroachments for each one of those different types of now, components. Now, for instance, an awning like, uh, I use my, my cottage for example. We have a roll-up awning that comes out mm -hmm. over the deck. 
can they bring that awning if it's, a, if it's a, you know, one of those re remote control ones? Mm -hmm. Can that go out into the eight foot area, or does it have to stay back? So they they, they sit on the grass, right? Can they have one of those electronic? It's permitted awnings? to encroach six feet. So they could go it's up to six feet. No, they can encroach into the setback six feet. So the two, two feet. You know, like I'd have to check that because I'm not sure if you're allowed to have an awning off the front porch. So you'd already be at eight feet with your front porch, maybe. So I don't know that you can go. If, if you're only allowed to encroach six feet into the setback, I don't think that's going to work. So this would be more for a house, maybe a side of a house. You know? this, no, I'm talking about the type that I'm thinking of probably. They, they were probably thinking of permanent awning. No, it says where possible awning should be retractable. Oh, Read your ordinance, Mark. I will try. That's just one of my own self <laughs> uh, Canopy, uh, canopy is a little bit different than an awning. That's your canopy. That's a typical canopy. There's probably different ways you can do it. You can post it. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be have the uh, knees. It can actually be posted to the ground, supported with posts. Here's your stoop. Uh, minimum landing width of four feet, minimum landing depth of four feet, permitted encroachment four feet. And because because stairs uh, stairs may be recessed into the building facade, stairs are not permitted to encroach onto any abutting sidewalk. So that's kind of your limit. <laughs> stairs may be built perpendicular or parallel to the building facade, but must lead directly to the ground level or an abutting side. What is the uh, maximum encroachment on the front? For steps and a stoop, sixty up, up to the sidewalk. Right now, it's up to the side. What if it doesn't have a sidewalk? Well, um, steps. steps. Yeah, you have to pull one in. My thought, my thought is, you've got a porch they that gets you to eight feet, yeah, and then you've got a stoop and steps, and that gets you right on the road. I think we say that in no instance can it be any closer than two feet to the property line. Okay. But uh, it's, not, makes sense. it's not saying it there, but I think we say it somewhere else. And the property line is usually inside of the road edge, right? Well, yeah, your right-of-way line and your property line should be one and the same. Right. But what about with, the with, with sidewalks? Sidewalk is... Well, again, if the, sidewalk, if the sidewalk isn't on your property, then you really can't have... Just because I don't, I'm not familiar with the roads down there. And I, don't, the I don't want to get too again. Yeah. I don't want to get right. too far in the weeds. The, you, you've got everything under the sun down there. There's virtually no sidewalks down there. Mm -hmm. Well, there is on Ocean Ave. That's about the only yeah. thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. And along Bayview. And along Bayview. Because that's it. We have rear additions. Notice that rear additions do have to be set back from the main walls of the house, so it doesn't just look like an extension of the, the main wall. Right. It has a different look to it. Um, estate wings are large uh, T-shaped additions. And then we talk about foundations. So we do get into the types of foundations that you will be seeing down there and the height standards for those. Uh, different kinds of materials and different kind of configuration depending on the heights that they have to be by the regulatory agency that controls that. Um, piers, pilings, hydraulic foundations, which are basically just walls with hydraulic openings so the water and sand can come in and out. Um, so we try to deal with all of that sort of stuff and how that all looks. Um, and then the frontage, which I mentioned earlier. Um, this is the frontage, and in the frontage you can't have parking. Okay, you see these shaded areas? Okay. You can have a driveway that goes through it along the side. The along back. the side, yeah. So you can see a driveway that goes up the side. So of the are they saying they can't park their car? They can't park there. With that, so if you look at that picture, right? <laughs> and the summer yeah. ones. I didn't ask that. What's that? Uh, if I'm looking at section one, residential yeah. yard, uh, article four. One. Okay. Is that off-street parking may not be located. It's number two. I. I. Off-street parking may not be located in the residential yard and shall be sited behind the minimum front setback. So you have a driveway. You see in this picture you've got kind of a shared driveway. It's a side-by-side -side driveway. So yeah. 
you're supposed to park back behind that shaded area. That okay. shaded area is representative of that set back to that porch. Okay. Is this a design guideline or enforcement guideline? That's, yeah, how do you enforce that? Yeah. You're supposed to be able to provide for it. Are we going to enforce it? Hell no. Okay. I don't have time to do <laughs> what I'm supposed to do now. Yeah. But thanks for putting it out there on TV. So <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to be parking <laughs> Are they going to be parking <laughs> Are they going to be parking me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, deal with, we'll deal with parking We'll deal with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Residential parking <laughs> Now, it's the main You thing could have answered it to design guide. The main, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, jumped, I jumped at that. Uh, yeah, it's... You get, when we're reviewing these, you've got to show that you're providing for it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you get your traffic plug full of cars already. And if they had a fence line that was up to the front of the, yeah. or the edge of the uh, porch. I mean, then. obviously, we're yeah. not going to be Nightmare. policing that 24-7. It's, yeah. it's something that we're going to try to make sure. It'll give us something to do, since we won't have any, any more business to do on our... Zoning board can take care of me. We can go around, we can go around all summer long with tickets. Yeah, there is an exception. <laughs> there is an exception to that, and that's what we call the beachfront garage court. Those are the properties that have beachfront on one side, so they're they're the back of their building is actually the street front. Yeah. And so they have to park somewhere, so we do allow it in those in those cases. But yeah. you're not you're only going to find that along Shipwreck and Bayview, maybe in a couple of places. Maybe there's another street that has those those kinds of yeah. uh, properties. So it's not very prevalent, but we do have to allow for it. We need badges. I've been trying to get a shirt for the last twenty years. What's that? Anyway, a shirt. We need like zoning enforcement. Zoning board yeah. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> zoning <laughs> enforcement team. <laughs> so I've already spent probably more time than I wanted to just going through the ordinance. But again, I encourage you to That's read good. through it. And, and find more time. So, so let's get back to what, how is this going to impact the way that you guys do your business? Um, Mark already mentioned one one good question that I I don't have an answer for is, are we going to be seeing limited reduction of yard size variances? All I can say is possibly because we haven't prohibited them yet for Higgins Beach. I don't even know if we would. Uh, I think we probably could. But I think we may just let this ride for a year and see what happens. <laughs> but but consider this. You guys are reviewing the standards, which I don't have right in front of me during the book, but I think in there somewhere, the applicant is supposed to sort of demonstrate a need. for the, e Even though it's fairly simple, they still have to demonstrate a need. They would have a very hard time finding a leg to stand on. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. I, I think it's gonna it's a problem that'll take care of itself. Yeah, my guess is you'll be discouraging them if they decide to come before us and it's like really? And, and Mark brought up a point a few a, a few months ago or maybe I don't know, uh, sometime in the recent past is why why are we hearing variances that maybe really don't stand a chance? And my answer in other words, why am I letting them through, you know? I don't. I don't. They yeah. still have the right. They still have the right. You do your job. Dump the golf. They still have the right. That was the email. That was the one o'clock meeting. That's right. uh, and the answer is everybody has a right, right to appeal. I I do my due diligence and tell them what I think their chance. I, I mean, I don't tell them what their chances are, but I explain what the the problem. We have a history of, of that experiment. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know, based on based on my interpretation of the ordinance, you don't meet the hardship criteria. However, you are free to make your best case and let the board of of your peers determine that. Right. It's not my job, but I I I have in past times tried very hard to discourage people, but I cannot say yeah. don't apply. That's not right. my call. So, uh, but anyway getting on track. So the limited reduction I think will take care of itself. I think I think where you're going to, I asked Dan tonight before the meeting, I said uh, to Dan Bacon, I said, what about the person that comes in and says, listen, I want to put a house here, I want to put a house at 18 feet from the front property line. I don't want a porch. Is that an appealable thing? Because generally variance appeals are for space and bulk type things uh, or area. This is a design component. Right. It's not really a, a dimensional thing. It's character-based. It's character-based. 
I don't have an answer. He didn't have an answer. He says, you know, I don't know. I, mean, I would say based on what you just, the way you talk, I would say they would have to have a porch style face. By setting this up, you're trying to assist the people that are building to develop the character that's supposed to be in that area. How does it meet the character criteria if it doesn't have a porch? Well, that's, right? that's why you put I mean, it in that's the ordinance. The whole, that's the whole question. Again, it'd be a difficult one. Very. But it'd be a difficult one for us to, in my opinion, to say, don't put a porch in. It's yeah, got the yeah, same character as everybody wall. else. Yeah. I, right? I, no. I think, it does not have the same character. I think you may have answered it right yeah. there. Because, again, they have to come to the board with their application for appeal, and they have to prove something to you. Right. They have to demonstrate something. If it's hardship, that's what they have to demonstrate. If it's practical difficulty, right. that's what they have to demonstrate. So I think your question is going to be, why can't you put a porch on there? Right. So that may be a hard question. Or, to or a porch like or component. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because it's given a lot of. Basically, it's saying that they want they want step ups. That's that's what it's getting. That's right. Really, what it comes down to. Right. But I listen. People want what they want in. And I guarantee there's somebody Somebody's out there right. that oh, yeah. doesn't want a porch. Oh, they're, they're already or doesn't want something, something that looks right. like a porch. Well, yeah. that's, that's why if you look at the, the glass on the face, it's limited because <laughs> modern design would put all glass on that front face. And you, can, you can pretty much do that. You can't because it's limited to 15 and 20 percent. Well, no, 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 that's right. a minimum. minimum. Yeah. It's all okay. That's a minimum. You could, you could, you could put 100 percent? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And still have... But only you get kicked off the board, man. Boy, this is a hard night. I can take it, though. We thought I'll, it was going to be an easy I'll meeting. be laughing next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there will be another meeting. <laughs> I'm going to come out and yeah, you. I'm not going to have to do anymore. So, we we a special, special exception. exception. When would we see a special exception down there? Um, special exceptions are generally for uses. So for the home occupation is one that you would commonly mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. So I don't think special exception. But that won't change. Um, the only time that might come into play is remember if it's a, if it's a, I don't know how many non-conforming uses there are down there. Really, when you stop thinking of it, it's primarily residential. I don't know that anybody has a, an auto body shop in the middle of Higgins Beach. You know, so it's, Probably not likely, but remember, yeah. if it is a non-conforming use and they want to well, the change apartment, it, the apartment building is about the only one. Maybe, yeah, maybe that might be the, the example. Mm -hmm. okay. But if they want to change that to another non-conforming use, it's a miscellaneous appeal, and you review that using the special exception criteria. Well, uh, taking a <coughs> home and splitting it up into condos, would that be a non-conforming use? That's a, that's a form of ownership, and again, okay. it's, di it's different. Um, it's a good question, and, and boy, I'm not the right guy to talk to about that. It, it, has to have a, it would have to be a legal two-family to be able to split it, I believe. Okay. Because you can't, an accessory You couldn't take a single family and make it. The apartment building, again, could be, yeah, that could be one. But yeah, I think generally, Rick, you're not going to see that too okay. much down okay. there. There may be a few two families where you could do that. Um, I know it's been done at Pine Point. Well, your big thing is the condo hotels, but I don't think you're going to see that down there. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the little town doesn't want them down there. I mean, they don't want any legal locations. So getting back to what are you guys likely to see now that this is in place, you're not gonna, definitely not going to see as many variance appeals for setbacks you know, because we've dealt with that. But where you might see a few is somebody who has an existing home that's, let's say they don't, they're not, they have an existing home that doesn't have a porch they're gonna have to and it's 15 <laughs> feet from the front <laughs> property line. So it doesn't meet the 18 foot minimum or the 21 foot maximum. And yet, they would like to put a front porch on, bringing them to Or they want to go up. Right. Or they want to go up. But, but even if they want to put a front porch on, for example, they, they might, that might be a case where you'd have to come, and I think, uh, come to the board. And I think that might be an instance where, again, it's a design component, but it also involves the setback. So that may be an appealable thing. Yeah, does that force them, if they, if they wanted to go out, does it force them to have to put porch on? 
if they had a single story structure 15 feet from the from the front property line and they wanted to put a second story on I don't think now they'd be able to do that they'd have to, they'd have to they, have to just like now if you want to put a second story on you'd have to go back to the front setback and then go up yeah. or come to the board for a variance so yeah they, they <coughs> technically could come to the board for a variance for that but again I don't know that, that would I don't know that you're going to see that many of those because the, the buildings that are closer than that to the front property line most of those already have like a front porch of some kind or a one-story uh, element on there and that's uh, why we that's how we came up with that kind of character base I mean, this is when we went to the town and the, and the right it gives them some flexibility uh, adding an accessory unit without touching the existing main structure Do they still have that three foot setback on the back property line of the garage? Right. If it's an accessory unit? Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's okay. still, yeah. it's still inherently the garage is first. We're right. not talking about what the use of that building is. Gotcha. We're gotcha. We're talking yep. about the dimensional requirements that, that building has yep. to meet. So it can't look like two big houses on the lot. It's well, you still got the story, house, but story and a half, half we call it. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably yeah. not going to be as large as what some people. I mean, right now, I think our accessory unit would allow like a 750 square foot. I think it would to a thousand, and you Well, no, it's still 750 up until <coughs> based on the primary oh, building okay. square footage. Yeah. You're not going to get that now no. because there is no size. Right. They can still attach. They can still do separate. But so. it's, here's the thing: you're living at the beach, guys. Yeah. Keep it, you're not living out on the Holmes Road or the Beach Ridge Road. Right. This is the beach. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it may be smaller, but you have to live a little smaller because mm -hmm. everything's a little smaller at the beach, and people have to get used to that. So I, I think it's a, a chosen style of life. Right. You don't want to live there. Don't live there. Right. You don't want to live in New York City. Don't live in. Well, Mark, that's fine for you, smaller people, but us bigger people. <laughs> <laughs> you do need wider. Again, <laughs> there's one thing you have to understand. Oh. Right? And that's the majority of the homes down there are rental properties. People buy them and maybe they're there two, three, yeah. four weeks a year. The rest of the time they're in it, and that's true. So, but I'm seeing more. They are, they're going to want something that that they can rent, maximize, yeah. and yeah. get the most out of it. But that I don't know if it's change slowly changing or if it's we're just seeing a few more. But people that I've talked to lately that have come in for projects, they want to live there year round. They may own property there now and, and only use it a few weeks out of the year, mm -hmm. but their plan is to be year-round residents. And then uh, and the other faction I'm seeing more and more of is people who want to buy and live there year-round that never had a history there. Yep. So I don't know if it's if it's like changing. I think there is. Or the last five appeals we've had have been all that they want to live yeah. there. They so, don't so want to own homes. They don't, don't want to be renting that it. That trend is going to if that's slowly going to migrate to it's the baby every, I can tell you everywhere else where I'm from up the north on the lakes that's what's happening yeah, it's the they baby, were always the baby cottage uh, now it's, yeah, homes. everybody's yeah. building nice big homes moving yeah. their families yeah. here. so I, I can't I can't uh, I wouldn't doubt that the same thing would be happening at the beach to what extent I'm not sure um, but I think I think the bottom line is this is going to reduce a great deal of the the load that you guys have historically carried at the zoning board, and not only that, I know that in many cases you, you've been faced with some very tough um, cases where, gee, it made sense for them to do what they're asking to do, but yeah. we're up against it. You can't prove hardship; mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it can't happen. I think some of those now could happen. They just have to, you know. We we dealt with one of the. If you got the, that one to work, you, need to toughest, work. you know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. The toughest designer I know of, who's very stuck on on his designs, and he's done a lot of them, and he found a way to make this work. When yeah. he, he said right from day one, "There's no way this will work," and yet we just kept challenging and challenging him, and he did it. I think a lot of these so, look just like the stuff he does. Right. Yeah. So, so he's a good designer. He's a very good designer. Yeah. yeah. But it's 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 a whole. It's, it's a whole change in the paradigm for him because yeah. it's just a different way of trying to design. He's, 
he's got his way, and now he's got to make that conform to this. And nobody wants, nobody likes change immediately. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I guarantee you, after about five or six of these, he'll have it down. Oh yeah, he'll have it down. So it, the, it, the only it, person that likes change is the one doing it to yeah. somebody. The only <laughs> other thing that we're working on, and I don't have a, I don't have any news to report on it yet, is remember we we keep running into this situation where people have to elevate because they're they're tearing down and rebuilding, and now they have to elevate to right. be flood yes. compliant. And it, or or they're adding to, or they just want to put a foundation under their house, mm -hmm. and they have to elevate. Um, and according to our ordinance, that's an increase in the nonconformance for some structures. So we're trying to, we're going to uh, be meeting with Phil Saucier next week to try to come up with proposed language um, uh, for an amendment to the ordinance that will eliminate that from having to come to the board for a variance. Right. To do what one code says you have to do. Right. <laughs> it's a requirement. Yeah, it's right. a requirement you're here, and we're saying the you board can't do, do it there. You have to do. It's right. There, that, to me, has no business coming to the board for a variance. You're either going to meet those regulations or you're not. Yeah. And it shouldn't be that you have to ask the board permission to do what one ordinance says you have to do. So um, we're, we're working on that. Hopefully we'll have that change for you, too. Uh, are you looking at any other areas of the town where you may apply a similar ordinance to this in, say, We've had other locations. Yeah. Um, I think the council was even asked during the public hearing phase if we were going to do this for Pine Point. Pine Point. Pine Point. And the short answer is not right away. Yeah. <laughs> there are lots of totally different things. It, it, it's, it's, it's very, in my mind, it's very different. Yeah. And I don't know if you have the same sense, Ed, being in Higgins Beach and looking at Pine Point, but... The lot sizes appear to be quite different in it's size. very yeah. different. Yeah. But I think yeah. it seems to me if we use the same process, where you get the exactly. neighbor... Exactly. I, I believe in the process. They, yeah, they, the process. They, need, they need the same thing done down there. Yeah. Well. It's just that they're going to have different, more different, different residential needs. areas. Right. And it's right. It's, it's and Higgins Beach. Higgins and Beach has one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you change? I I can't see it ever ever happening at the front press, yeah. to be honest with you. I just don't see it. There's really not a lot out there. The stuff that's out there is old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful home. There's some <coughs> really yeah. There, yeah. I, I it's just a weird area. I don't I would never say never. I just don't think it's a priority. Right. At this point. I know we've had a lot of variances out at Prouts, a lot of variance requests because of odd shaped lots and, yeah. Yeah. and other things. And, but even worse than Pine Point, there's no sort of standard lot size. Well, I shouldn't say that. There sort of is in certain sections some standard lot sizes. This is a very old, 100 year old subdivision. Yes, it is. It is that city, the, the blocks. Yeah. I just don't know. Um, it's been so bastardized up to this point, so many different combinations of those lots that it's very hard to sort of pick up a, a standard lot out there now. Yeah. Right. We don't seem to get as many appeals there as we do at right. the point. They get more to work with than probably to get out to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll take them one at a time. I, I, I think we would be probably doing this process. It wasn't cheap to do. I was mm -hmm. going to ask you, what does it cost? I, do, I don't have a final figure. Dan wouldn't share it with me. But it was, yeah. you know, it, I, it was worth it. Don't get me oh, wrong; yeah. it was expensive, but I think it was worth it, and it was the right process to do. If we'd have tried to done, have done this in house, we probably would have butchered it badly. The process was well done, from yeah. what I observed. Yeah, yeah. you could, if you picked up three lots in taxes, you probably kept the cost. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, the good part about it is it gives the owners a chance to improve the quality of their property and the value in their property. Yeah. It increases the tax base at the same time. So I think both the town and the owners <coughs> benefit. And it gives them flexibility that they didn't have before, a likelihood, more likelihood to pass when it comes in front of us because it's much clearer. Probably, so probably not going to affect the schools. Right. It's all the way around. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Right. It won't be a win for everybody, but... You know, I think it's a it's gotta be a seventy five percent improvement yeah. out there. Seventy five percent of the property Just the sheer fact that the people had an opportunity to voice their opinion as to what they wanted for their community. 
and, you know, they've basically been asking for that for years and years, having to go before the zoning board to mm -hmm. make any changes. To make changes, and you know, the current and zoning you, was you could take credit for that. Huh? You could take credit for that. You left the zoning board to go soft the council and came back to the zoning board to come with the flag in the sand. There you go. <laughs> but the people, the people really appreciated the opportunity to do that. It was fun. I, I enjoyed it. I've been a part of a lot of these public coming together type things to, to try to solve problems. I've never seen as good attendance as we had at Higgins Beach. I've never seen the participation, um, enthusiasm. No pitchforks. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. no, no. <laughs> there was, there was, there were, there were some, there were some contested, heated arguments and, and discussions happening. That's good. That's part of the process. Mm -hmm. But just to have the involvement that that we had, I think was was the key. It was it everybody no, but it was a really good representation of of the entire thing in the beach community there. But I never got the feeling from what little I saw that it became personal. No, it was no, it was very it was it was very well done. Uh, people people had passion for their <coughs> whatever their issue was, and that's fine. That's great. Yeah. And um, but for the most part, with the exception of maybe I don't know, you know, one or two. Um, everything was conducted very civilly. It was very productive. It was very positive in trying to find the answers. It was more of other towns. Yeah. Are, are you going to are you going to package that for many years? We thought about it's it. not our process. It's the uh, it was the design team that did it. We were just we were just the staff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's it, it's good. Um, so anyway, that's I think. I think it's a good time to wrap it up for tonight. Um, I'm happy to do this again as things evolve, and maybe I have more answers <laughs> than questions mm -hmm. the next time. Uh, certainly, can give you briefings at any any of the future zoning meetings as as this thing. Well, you always do a good job of the the right ups before the meeting. Yeah, yeah, they're helpful. So we'll we'll kind of be watching to see what what impact this has on the business that you guys have come before you. Um, I can't, I can't say, I don't see any variances coming for us. I don't see any limited reductions. And well, the ones that do become very Not clear. there. Yeah. Right. Well, remember, we still got Pine Point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you know, so yeah. those do. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but so. if you look at the volume that was coming across the board's plate, I would oh, say it's probably 50% yes. in that area. Well, I, think, least. So I think you're right. I think yeah. it's about 50%. Yeah. I, I actually tried to tally that up. Um, I think it was last year, and yeah. that's just about what it came yeah. to. About half, half of the appeals were in one of the beach communities. Just a curiosity, say, how many of the, the ones that we have done, and I know this is kind of conjecture, that we've approved matched this style, this function? In other words, did you say that 50% of the stuff that we had approved the last ten years down there when it was built matches would it, this. Would it match this? Yeah. Well right. I, I would say there's a certainly a fair percentage. I don't know what that percentage would be, but when you stop and think of it, for the most part, when people come in and ask for a variance, it's basically to put back what they have. Very seldom is it to expand to something more. It's more often they're tearing it down and they'd like to put it right back because they've enjoyed their backyard where it is, their neighbors enjoyed their backyard where it is. And they were actually <coughs> trying to come and say, don't make me push this back into the middle of my lot where it's yeah. never been. And so Which we, did. we came up with these setback distances based on kind of the average of where buildings fell on the lot. So I'm going to say that, yeah, a high percentage, I don't know how high, but certainly a, a high percentage of them probably would have met or come very close to meeting this. The, the design elements, not so much. You know the components, right. how the how yeah, there's some yeah. houses. <coughs> I mean, you know, there's there's a few designers that had had their certain things that they like to do. One of the one of the things we're debating right now is you've seen them before, where most of these sketches that I've shown you here that are 
examples in the ordinance are very simple a frame or not a frame but gable type roofs or whatever symmetrical not multiple ridge lines or e lines you know not a lot of step downs and pull outs but and you know what I'm talking yeah. about because you've seen a number of those I'm not going to mention any names but <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a lot of houses that are designed that way because yeah, it's right. interesting New Jersey look it's it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of having the debate that we haven't actually stipulated in here that you know it has to be limited or you know we're not we're not putting a limit on that. But the discussion was at one point we thought we were talking about that as one of the things that wasn't really in character with Higgins Beach that we were really looking for simpler lines. So I don't know if we'll be looking to change Modify, that. Yeah. You know, yeah put some kind of a qualifier on it or yeah. um, it's something for future discussion I guess to see. So there, there, this will definitely see some more changes and tweaks as we go forward um, but I, I, in no way will I know, will it ever result in making you guys busier <laughs> than, um, than you have been and, and I, I anticipate that it'll continue to be, you'll see less and less appeals and your job will be more important because you'll be dealing with things that need to be dealt with instead of nuisancey things that shouldn't be allowed anyway. You know. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's really good. I appreciate the efforts that you down in the planning board yeah. and that here at the town uh, made to make this happen. And I appreciate that the council actually approved it because making these kind of changes bring on a bag of risk with unknowns. And they're thinking, do, do we do it? You know what? What are the downsides? And they saw the process, and I think the process probably put them at ease, and that that certainly helped. So I think your approach was very good, and it must have made their decision well, much easier. We want them right there. Yeah, he had to live through it. Yeah, yeah. sitting up there and you're trying to balance those things. Right. I mean, they came down, they saw it themselves, they participated, and uh, it was very well done. Well, in all the public. arenas to criticize this thing, the planning board and the town council, very, very few people stood up and criticized it. Yeah. Everybody that stood up was in favor of it, thought it was a good idea, but very few people. And even if you went, if you went to the first review where they came back to the residence of Higgins Beach, that was a fiery meeting, a fiery <laughs> meeting. And that's probably just because they want to get the steam off that's been built up for right. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the concerns that people had were rectified. Yeah. This is a tribute yeah. to the process. Very well done. Well, it's a tribute to the planning department yeah. because they had to field all of those things, yeah. work on it, fold it back in. By the time it got to the council level and the planning board level, everything was all straight out. That's awesome. Which was no, well, anything else you look at? No, I think that's that's good. Um, and again, I look forward to a, a fruitful 2016 with you guys, and I appreciate everything that you guys do. Uh, we try to make it as easy as we can for you, give you as much information as we can, so your job is easier. And all I ask is, please, 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 try to make as many meetings as you can, so we have a quorum to do business. <laughs> <laughs> and learn the new word. The new, yeah, the new <laughs> word. What is the word, Mark? Uh, uh, Spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> it really gives a little bit of cream cheese. You have that in a couple of cannolis. In your uh, you're retiring uh, for a short period of time. Anything you'd like to say before you? Thank you for everything you guys have done. It's been an enjoyable uh, time being on the board. It's good to get new people coming in. I think it new blood always helps to get new viewpoints, and so I think it's going to be a benefit to the process. He's old blood. I know. <laughs> Bad penny. But he's new. He's <laughs> new <laughs> again. <laughs> He'd be fresh. Any other board members coming? No, I just would reiter reiterate my comments that you really tried to work with people and help people feet to the fire on what you thought was best for the community and you did a really good job of that and 
that will be missed on the board because you did do an excellent job. And I think your engineering knowledge has yeah. really brought a lot to the, to the table too. You know, there were there were some things that you brought up that I think most of us hadn't even thought about. It, it was very very helpful. Mm -hmm. So we will miss you. Thank you. We'll see you in 12 months. Eleven. <laughs> 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 okay. Do you have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Hope you learned something.